A new date has been confirmed for the 20th National Sports Festival today by the Sports Ministry. And a lot of the athletes are very happy. That's the biggest piece of news coming in from Nigeria today. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Let's take you through the things that we will be looking at tonight on the show. We talk about football on the domestic scene. The Nigeria National League will get us talking. Nigeria Professional Football League will also get us talking. Earlier in the day, the draws for the UEFA Champions League, UEFA Europa League were conducted. And of course, uh, at the quarterfinal stage, the teams now know their opponents. We'll talk about all of that for you on the show tonight. This is going to be an interesting ride. I have uh, three guys who are going to be with me from start to finish. And we're going to take a look at all of these things that I've talked about the uh, impact of uh, the news uh, that just filtered in uh, in the early hours of today, uh, the sports ministry making that announcement. And, and of course, a lot of sports lovers very happy. We look at that. We'll also look at what is happening on the domestic scene. And if time will allow, we'll also probably give you a slice of tennis. But let me pause a little and bring you into all that we're doing on the show. You're an integral part of this show, as we always say. So just in case you're wondering how you can be a part of the show, how you can get across to us, how you can uh, let your views be heard, how we can feel your pause on the show. That's it. All your screen. Send us a mail, sports tonight at channels tv.com. On Facebook, get across to us, channel side for sports. Then on Twitter, you can also get across to us at channels underscore sports tweet at that handle and of course we will give time to read your tweets uh, and of course your comments that's it all right so let me quickly introduce my partner in the lagos studio uh before uh i go to uh a part of lagos and of, of course london to introduce my uh other two guests but i start with the one in the lagos studio uh Ikena Okechukwe okay, joins us tonight. It's been a while. Yeah. It's but, been a while. but it's good to have you back. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. I've made the team this week. <laughs> yeah. It's good to uh, to be in the show. It's good to be um, in the studio. And um, it's an underloaded weekend uh -huh. to discuss sporting activities and we'll do justice to that. All right. Let, let, let's just start by what, what happened uh, today. Uh, yeah. It was the news that we were, yeah. uh, everybody was waiting for. Uh, after many postponements, the, at the time it was postponed last, we, you know, there was a framework that, okay, it's going to be held in April, dates not known, mm -hmm. we're just waiting for an official confirmation. And some people were scared because if, if you don't hold it in April, you might not, hold it. Yeah, you, you it, might not be able to... There was, there was, that, there was that fear in some quarters. In some quarters. Yeah, in some quarters so, that, and, and you don't blame anyone because of the pandemic that happened last mm -hmm. year and, and, and everything. So... I think this is a is a bold one. It's, it's interesting because this some of these athletes have been redundant for quite some yeah. time now. So we have, have, I think I visited one of the states where they were present. They, they they were bored because they needed, they needed the activities to kick, kick start. You know. What let, going let, to let's do. talk about the implications mm. first. First, mm -hmm. based on our announcement today that uh, the event is going to start on April second. Oh, yeah. By implication, is fourteen days to go officially 14 days to go to the National Sports Festival. You're going to see a confirmation of that right there on your screen. But we can tell you from here that it's 14 days to go to the 28th National Sports Festival to be held in uh, Benin City yeah. and Doe State. Another thing that uh, must be said, the number of athletes have been pruned yeah. from 14,000 to 8,000. Yeah, because, because of the first of the pandemic and you know how, how you have, and it's, it's interesting you mentioned 14 days because that's how long it, it, it should be, it should take for people to quarantine, mm -hmm. to get ready to make sure that everybody is in, in a bubble mm -hmm. before they now move to the sports festival. So the, the, the sports community have proved that because there's no, there's no um, sense having a lot of sporting activities mm -hmm. when, when, when we have this, this and, and also to put down costs. So it's, it's, it's wonderful, it's, it's finally going to happen, at, at least for, for sports, sporting people like us, we are going to have something to see. And also in preparation for the Olympics. Okay. So we, it's, it's a good right. one, and we believe there's going to be an interesting... Sorry for the sports that they, some, of, some of the activities that they had to cut down. Mm -hmm. But, but that, at, that, least, yeah, at least it's better than the event. We have uh, something to look forward to. All right. Okay. All right. So uh, 
let me get uh, Austin and um, Alfred Okoligwe to pitch in before we take a look at the report put together on what just happened today. Greetings to you guys. I have both of you on. Uh, it's good to have you side by side. And uh, uh, thanks for joining us today. There's a lot to talk about. Yes, party greetings, yeah, me. Uh, good to be on the show. Uh, shout out to uh, Iken and, of course, Alfredo Koligwe and to all our viewers from different parts of the world. It's good to be on sports tonight. Uh, the drama series of the National Sports Festival continue. Uh, guys, if it doesn't happen April the 2nd, let's close church. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, Alfred, um, thanks for joining us. Uh, some will say maybe the drama has ended, but like Austin said, uh, let, let, the suspense is still on. We need to wait to April too. But but thanks for joining us anyway. Thank you very much, uh, Yemi. Uh, I mean, uh, for if you follow the drama as it concerns um, the development um, with the COVID nineteen management and rest of them, you'll agree with me that um, in this uh, part of town life has returned to normal. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the new normal is what we have uh, presently. And I don't see anything different that we're doing differently. Um, life has returned to normal. So um, if the National Sports Festival, like Austin said, does not hold this April, then it's as good as not holding it at all. Um, I, I think um, at this point, there is a little or no impediment against the, holding, the, 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 holding the event this time. Okay, guys, uh, let me start with Austin. Um, Ikin has uh, given me his thoughts on the things I'm going to ask you. The implication of the news today, uh, or let me just say the takeaway, we now know it's 14 days to go. Uh, Ikena also rightly pointed out that that 14 days is enough for you to quarantine and to do all of the things that you need to do. And also the number pruned from 14,000 to 8,000. I mean, those two, uh, those two points, uh, I mean, what, what was your opinion about it? Yeah, um, the last time um, we spoke to the chairman of the local organizing committee, who also doubles as the deputy governor of Edo State, he mentioned this, that they're going to cut down on the number of athletes coming and there's going to be some sort of um, phasing and spacing just, you know, to have there to COVID-19 protocols. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it is very, very important that we have that going. Uh, I've not been a fan of let's just do it. I'm a champion of let's do it well. Let's do it the right way. Let's make an impact. Let's get better with, with whatever we want to do. But we understand that COVID has put us in this situation where we just want to do it. And the National Sports Festival has a peculiar situation. It hasn't been properly staged since a code 2012. Yeah. So I'm part of the people that say, okay, let's just do a do 2020 and get it out of the way. But it comes with a lot of concerns. Here. I mean, one because COVID-19 is still out there. Two, because there's still some level of uncertainty opening around this um, organization of the National Sports Festival. Three, we also have the Olympics coming up. Four, we ask to turn up the way that we expect them to turn up. The issues are just so much. But I'm concerned with COVID-19. At those days, they have promised that they are going to, um, they are going to be serious with rapid testing. I'd like to see how they will go about that because I mean, eight k is a lot of persons. Eight thousand persons is a lot of numbers, Still a lot. you know, to deal with, you know. And to ensure, yeah, okay. to ensure that persons are there to rules and conditions is very, very important. So yes, All right. fourteen days to go now. We're trying to get this thing done, but we must. If we're not doing anything right, Yemi, mean, we must get safety right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's the bottom line. You must get uh, safety. Let, let me go to Alfred. Uh, I need a quick response for, from you, athlete. Uh, Alfred. I, I almost called you an athlete. Alfred, <laughs> do you think we can get the best from guys who have been training, been distracted, uh, in training one moment, out of training the next? Now they hear, okay, in 14 days' time, uh, you, you have to give your best when uh, you, you, you get to the tracks or whatever event that you, that you do. Do you think we're going to get the best? With that scenario that I just, uh, you know, talked about, do you think we'll get the best from the athletes? In the present circumstance, I don't think um, this time around. I also talked about doing it, doing the right thing. Um, yeah, there are so many factors that you know is expected to um, put this event in a negative light. But I want to look at the positive. The positives are that 
there are people, take for example in the athletics, um, some fantastic time returned by athletes in Accra. They need a national platform where they can test themselves in case it's like an all comers um, people coming out to show their skill, uh, trying to see if in an event, in a in, in the class event, to get themselves to the Olympics with the time that they return, especially in athletics. While in other sports, it's an avenue to, instead of um, keeping them uh, not being busy, it's, it's, it's an avenue for them to do what they know how to do best to get the result. We are not looking at, I mean, the World Championship, we're not talking about qualification for the World Championship this time around. That, we'll think about that in the future. But get this, I think the positive thing is getting them engaged, ensuring that they're doing something. All right. Um, and test where they are. When all of this COVID, we cannot just close shop. If you look elsewhere in the world, things are happening. Events are taking place. And um, if you say for safety, because of the 8,000 athletes, we have football in, almost in all cadres now. The NNO has joined in. There are games going on. Everybody is busy. I mean, for the non-contact sport, we've had, we have where, you know, at the sports where people are doing. So I think the positive for me is that these guys are busy. Um, right. They will test themselves the time they return and, you know, the points that they get against other athletes around the world. And okay. knowing that um, in the future, it can just pay them off. All right. So um, it's interesting. L let's quickly uh, uh, take a look at a report put together on what happened today when the sports ministry uh, made it known that uh, the National Sports Festival to be held uh, in Edo State will commence on April 2nd. We take that report and come back for more on Sports Tonight. The visit of the Minister of Youth and Sports Development to the Edo State Governor points in one direction. The National Sports Festival, which has suffered several postponements owing to the COVID-19 outbreak and logistics. It's our desire. But the Minister uses the opportunity to announce a substantive date and the modalities for the hosting sure of the competition. We have also now decided, working with the Deputy Governor who you assigned, and who also heads the, the LOC to convey to all the governors and all the state uh, sports commission that April 2nd, the camp for the sports festival will open and that on April 6th, the official opening of the festival by Mr. President will also take place. But beyond that, we also are working closely with the PDF, the PTF, with, of course, inclusive of the NCDC and others, to make sure that the necessary support that will be needed in terms of vaccination, our athletes have been promised that vaccinations will be available, test kits, etc. We've also toned down the number from 14,000 to 8,000 athletes that will come. But most importantly, and I must thank the Deputy Governor for taking the lead on this, we've been able to get the University of Benin to host our athletes. As you said, up to... While insisting on the readiness of the state to host the event, the Edo State Governor, Godwin Obaseki, appeals to the federal government to make funds available for the Games. There are clearly you know, going to be expenses related to just that hosting. And that is the, really the, the, the cost, the large portion of the cost of any games. Yes, while we will, you know, strain ourselves, we'll stretch to still provide some of the support, but we will be very open that we do not have all of the money to fund, you know, uh, to host the athletes while they are here within the next two to three weeks. So it is important that the federal government comes through with its commitment before the games open. I would not like athletes to come to a door and we are not able to feed them three square meals while they are here. The minister then embarks on an inspection tour of the Samuel Obemudia Stadium, where he gives assurance that the federal government will provide the financial support for the sports festival. We have spoken about the, the cost implication of 
postponement. And I said it, whether it's a sporting event, even if it's a wedding or your birthday party, once you postpone, there are cost implications. Most of when it's just a massive uh, event that we've planned. It's taken almost two years to prepare for this. Uh, we have written, we, like I said, Financial support will come from federal government. The processes are taking place because there are processes that must go through. And we hope that all of this will come in time now that we've set a date for it. So we're confident. Can I have one too? This I is the final the phase car. of the which preparations car? ahead of the multi-sports competition, which is expected to be held under strict health and safety protocols. All right, that's, that's the report on uh, the uh, sports festival uh, that's going to begin on April 2nd. Uh, Ikena is still with me. A, a lot of angles um, to, to look at. On one hand, you could say that the federal government, just by this, this is a statement of intent. Yes, yes commitment. But and then you listen to the governor, if you're a skeptic, <laughs> your legs are shaking. No, it's just an, an, an appeal. Yes. Okay, it's just an appeal. So... They have done their part, yeah. and um, the, the ministry have also done their part. And coming to a those days is like, like commitment yes. to an, a reassurance. That in itself. Yes, it's a reassurance that we are, we are committed to we're this. Going to we're, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to Like the minister you. said, hopefully, yeah. those hopefully things will come true. So it's, it's like an appeal to them. The pandemic has, you know, it has gone deep into the finances of many most states. Yeah. So a those states, they're they are big enough to host it, but with this at this moment, any help they can get from anywhere will be will be will be yeah. very very vital and very good. So the 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 visit by the sports ministry to me is a reassurance that we are behind you and whatever the, the, your, your everything we promised are, you you're going to get you're going to get. So it was just like you know forcing it out, but I think at the end of the day the, the federal government will come through. It's a, it's a national sports festival, so it's, it, if if it goes well, everybody will be applauded, both the state and the federal government. So. That, that visit to the is, is necessary mm -hmm. and is vital, and I think they are going to support them in any way they can. So in your opinion, no suspense anymore? No, 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 that, that, should, that wouldn't be. If, if, if the, the ministry didn't visit, didn't pay, the that would have been visit, an issue. That would have been an issue. Maybe we'll be asking why are they not mm -hmm. going, are they, mm -hmm. they checking out or are mm -hmm. they not going to? Mm -hmm. But for him to make that, the minister making that move yes. to a deal state, you understand? It's like a reassurance. That this is going to happen and we are going to support you in whatever way we can so i believe there's no there's no room for skepticism i think i think we are good to go we're good to go yeah and um before we go on a break the, the state and edo state mm. you think now that everything um it, it appears uh to be going in the direction they want they'll be able to quickly dust themselves up and, and in, host in, yeah host in, the in terms of the facilities i think they are ready they are ready yeah, yeah. even with something which, up, which yeah. is going to be the the center of some mm -hmm. of some of these activities they already they, they, they put it in place. And hosting, hosting the Super Eagles was like a test run mm -hmm. to what mm -hmm. is going to come. So, but all they need is that, because hosting such, such an event goes beyond just a facility. You know, there will be hotels, there will be accommodation for it. And also abiding by the protocol of the, of the COVID-19 rules, so that, which is very, very important. So there's a lot of things, but it is, I think they're big enough to host the event as it is right now. Okay. All right. So I guess uh, we just we, we we leave it at that. Maybe I should ask the guys. Um, even though I know we're pressed for time, uh, maybe I should ask the guys. Uh, let's look at the states. The the states. Quick one. Austin and Alfred. The states that will compete. Um, do you think the time is enough to just say, guys, dust yourself up and uh, give us a good performance in Edo State? Let me start with Alfred. Thirty second response. We're about to go on a break. Then Austin takes it from there. Person like no other member, the number of athletes have been cut down. Um, the number has been cut down, and so it's not a question of uh, having the same medal hall. Um, you find athletes who have um, been on holidays for a long time now coming back, so you don't get that level of competition that you had in time for the day. I mean, anything that can bring people together, bring them up and um, compete, um, you know, in a the world class environment, or rather, right, the community environment, and this are the best of is something that will really, really. I mean, when this a year ago, everybody was in their rooms and not, um, nothing was happening. So, um, I think um, it will be a different as possible this time around. We're still on the matter. As much as I don't want us to take too much time, there's no way we can av avoid it. Uh, I mean, it's, it's our own mini Olympics, yeah, and um. 
now that we feel that the drama has ended, we, we can now talk about sports. Yes. We can now talk about sporting events, records to be broken, I mean, facilities, all the issues yeah. that are just... I mean, this is a platform for some of these guys to, you know, put, go to the next yes. level. Yes, yeah. You understand? And, and, and it was unfortunate what happened to them. It was nobody's fault. Yeah. But I think it's, it's something that should be we should be hosting regularly. It's something that it's, it's an event that should... At least biannually, uh, by, sorry, by by biannually. Bi bi yeah, which is hosting such such an event. So because it's a without fail, without fail, because it's a, it's a platform for these some of these local talents to go to go yes. out, outside the country, or you know you know make make a career out of what they're to doing. Show, to show to the younger generation that we're serious. Yeah, with sports, with sports. So it's it's because it's, it's another need to create jobs. Yeah, it's sports is another need to create jobs in the country. So I think it's something we should do more often. You know, so I'm waiting because having done the last event in 2012 is, is a long time. And, and I think also, my, my, my opinion, a lot of people can disagree. When we do this, in spite of all the challenges, it shows that when we now say that we accept that sports is, uh, that generates income, mm. it means that we are serious and we're not paying lip service. Yeah. But if at every opportunity, every situation, we're ready to roll over and say, it's not my fault, we can't do this, then it shows we're not serious. Yeah. Uh, but we know that what happened affected everybody. E everybody. everybody. It, it's, it's a unique situation yeah. and we're adapting to it in our own way. So kudos to the sports ministry. Oh, fant kudos fant to... At, at, at least for, for a while, we are, we are doubting whether it will even take place. Yeah. In fact, at a point, sometime early this year, we said, okay, maybe... It's, it's over. It's over. Yeah. <laughs> so, but... You know, they are, they are, up, they are up again, All right. and we are going to do this event, which is wonderful. All right. Um, let, let me allow Austin, probably that, that, that will be the final thing we'll say about this. Uh, let me see if Austin is still with us, and uh, uh, I'll get his thoughts on it. Okay, maybe I should go to Alfred uh, uh, quickly. Uh, Alfred, I think now, now that the drama is over, we, we can now talk about sports, we can talk about records, we can talk about all the things that we ideally we should be talking about, not you know, all the behind the scenes. Now we can talk about the games proper. And the countdown now, I mean, we can really begin to uh, look towards the games. Yeah, exactly so. Um, the, the, that's the point um, I was trying to make. When I, when I said that um, the sports are going to be hosted and the games are eventually. What do you tell somebody that qualified from the regional level? is going to um, uh, represent the state in the final. That's the festival proper. Uh, that uh, the festival has been cancelled or cannot hold. I mean, for that young athlete, for that um, uh, new athlete, it's an opportunity for that athlete to be seen to launch him herself into national reckoning. So those are the platforms that you can play. I'm looking forward to um, see one or two stars come out of this. Uh, I mean, one or two might just upset the apple cat, you know, and train the, uh, the cat, as they say, among the pigeons. Just causing an upset. And um, the, the news, uh, you know, we're generating something that we need to talk about. Because like, um, our, like Kenna said, this is Nigeria's Olympics. For every athlete coming, for every generation of athletes, you know, uh, being born in Nigeria, every one of them looks forward to the National Sports Festival. I mean, to toy with the idea of um, the states cannot no longer go, no funds are available for sports, but we have um, security good for uh, those. In, I mean, it's something that we shouldn't even talk about. This is a perennial event, and it should be seen to, to, to be that way. Um, I want to commend the Honorable Sports Minister. He has yeah. shown doggedness. He has insisted. In fact, when people were talking about, no, that's not good, he insisted that this festival should go on. I think um, um, they should get credit for that, and, and hopefully, Bini will, will really set new standards for, 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 for the games. Okay, uh, Austin is back with us. Um, Austin, now we can hear a sigh of relief and talk about sports, not behind the scenes, not the things happening. <laughs> We can now talk about sports, do a proper countdown, go through the records, uh, and, and probably look for those who will break the records. Yeah, uh, it's heartwarming, yeah, me. And, you know, as Alfred was speaking, I was just you know, going back to, to the last time um, we had the National Sports Festival in Abuja. I think it was the Mount Bong that stunned uh, the country with a performance uh, right there in the 400 meters. So 
So yes, this is really good. Um, and it's an opportunity to see how far we've done with the grassroots. It's an opportunity for states to assess, you know, some of the works that they've done. Um, yes, let's also say well done to the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development uh, for the level of commitment they've shown uh, towards ensuring that this sports festival holds. But but these are the times, you know, no one saw COVID-19 coming. Yes, so yes. what COVID-19 has done to everybody is nice. Feel your bands. You don't know when hunger will strike. Yeah, you know, always exactly. Do. You Just know, be because prepared. it happens at that time again, we're looking for, for what else to blame. So it shows that we all know, yeah, me, Alfred, he can now. We love the fire brigade approach in Nigeria. <laughs> we want to keep it till the late. What COVID has done to us now is do must keep extra time to prepare properly for things so that when there are disappointments, you can pick yourself back up. All right, all right. So that's it. Uh, if, if I may. Okay, if you may, you, you may. <laughs> in two minutes. There's a new way. Outside Africa, they're looking at hosting sports festivals now, or hosting sports Sport events. events. Um, I was watching something yesterday about the, the new way to, to host an Olympics. Uh, by, by, um, the, the, there's a region in Germany called Rhine region. So it's, it's sort of a city because it's, it's giving financially, it's so much pressure strain. On, strain on the city. Now they're going to host it in different places across, not just the city, across the region. The same thing is going to happen with Euro 2020, okay? Mm. It's not going to be one city or one country anymore. It's going to be some games will be spread, spread across, the across the continent. Ease the financial burden exactly. and, and also make so it easy. If, if the if the Disney is too much on each state, can we have, let's say, we'll do South-South. You understand? We have um, some activities. Okay, hosting by regions. Hosting by okay. regions. All right. You understand? In, in South-East, you know, that kind of thing. So the, the states can come together. And host, the, and host the event. Okay, all right. So uh, we can also, uh, as far as Ikeda is concerned, we can also begin to look at joint bids now. It's possible, even regional yeah. bids. Who says it can't, it can't be done? I, I see both guys smiling. I, I'm tempted to ask them, but I know we're not going to leave the <laughs> National Sports Festival if I go down that route. So maybe we'll reserve that discussion for another time. It, guys, it's time to talk about the Nigeria Professional Football League. Let's take a look at the fixtures. Then, guys, you're going to... Talk about the games that you think uh, something spectacular might happen. So let's look at uh, uh, match day um, 17, it is. Let's look at that and uh, take a look at the fixtures. Guys, I want you to pay attention to what is on screen because I require that you tell us what you think is going to happen. I know you don't have a crystal ball, but you might be asked to do that uh, as I ask you the games that you think we should be looking out for. If I you bar, FC if I you bar will take on Chicago Golden Stars. MFL will take on Aqua United. Lobby Stars will take on Rivers United. Sunshine Stars will take on the Aba Elephants. That's talking about Aimba. All of this March Day 17 fixtures. Other fixtures, uh, Dakota FC will take on Platy United. Rangers will take on Nasra United. Abia Warriors will take on Casino United. Kwa United will take on Adamawa United. These are the fixtures in the Nigeria Professional Football League. And to um, the last two fixtures, Wiki Taurus will take on Canopilus. Heartland will take on Worry Wolves. Heartland will take on Worry Wolves. Uh, Austin, just take it away. Uh, that question, what, what's your star match for week 17? Uh, what other places should we be looking uh, to? Uh, venues, you think, uh, if something spectacular is going to happen, it might be, might be a gege, might be Jaws, might be which, which, which venues? Uh, well, there are a lot of juicy fixtures for match day uh, 17, but um, I'm looking forward to Rangers and Nasarawa United. Uh, the, the top four teams, actually, I mean, they are all tied on 27 points. Uh -huh. Tells you this is arguably the most competitive football league in the world. So um, two of those top four teams are playing at home, two playing away. So I'm looking at those guys that are playing at home, and that's uh, Rangers. And um, uh, if you take a look, Rangers taking on Nassau United. Nassau United, they're now beating in three matches. Uh, Rangers also need to prove a point. Uh, they've been having some good form, so if they win that one, it might just solidify their position right there on the table. And the second team I was trying to remember playing at home that can also exert some authority is Quara United. And yeah, I mean, interestingly, They've been unbeaten at home. That's arguably still the surprise package of the season. Uh, Quara United, uh, they've played admirable football. They've also shown that uh, they can compete. They cannot respect any team. So, yes, for me, it's the top four guys. Aqua United 
is in fifth with 26 points. And sixth position is Rivers United with mm. the same 26 points. So it shows you how competitive it is from number one to number mm -hmm. six. But there are also some interesting games we, we can also, you know, look forward to. Sun, Sunshine Stars, more problems for them because the LMC have banished them to Lagos for their next two matches. They are struggling nine games without a win, and now they've gotten into more trouble because of the crowd trouble that uh, they, they, they started against Natural United, I think, on March the 15th. So for me, it's the four, top four guys. If Aqua United and Rivers <coughs> United can dream big, win their matches, they can also flex shoulders with the guys at the top. So interesting match the 17 we're going to have. Okay. All right. Uh, let, let me go to Alfred now. Uh, Pierce is, uh, is, is back with us. Uh, Alfred, uh, which games uh, do you think uh, we should be looking uh, forward to? And by the way, what's your star match for uh, match day 17? And the venues you think something spectacular might happen? Well, um, Heartland versus Worry Wolves. Worry, they are in trouble. Okay. Um, just um, after match day, the sack the coach Evans will gain. The assistant will take um, will, um take the team to Owori for this match. Against the Heartland team that are completely on the corner. They've made the uh, the brand new Dan I am stadium a fortress of some sort. Uh, they as they are flying now. Got two goals in their last game and so you look at it team that is flying. I feel feel strongly for uh for Sunshine Star. Their next game is the game it's uh, it's one that I don't know how they would, how they would navigate through that one. They fell still without the win in is it eight or nine straight games. So it's um, it's um, it's a big worry for them. Wiki tourist, wiki tourist versus candle pillar is another game that will touch up there. When it comes to support uh, in the northern region, you can always count on support that uh, candle pillars will get against um, wiki tourists that has um, remained. Somehow, uh, very, very strong at home. Uh, they got a win against Rangers, even when they went down uh, to 10 men in that game. So, for Cano Pillars, now without Coach uh, Lano Scotia, who has uh, told him it's all exciting, it's apparent, and non payment of salaries. You see how they go with uh, if, uh, Coach Ibrahim. is been there before, before the arrival of Scotia. Uh, okay. And they got a win in his first match in two charts. So, uh, for Cano Pillars, it's another derby. I will just say. Uh, it will be interesting to see how they pull out this so one. Traveling for them has been a big struggle. Um, against Dakada, they were beating. Against um, Adia Warriors, they were beating. This time around, maybe they will be uh, better and they will be lucky against them. Okay. All right. So, uh, Ikena is with me. Ikena, your thoughts? Um, I'm looking forward to MFM versus um, Aqua United. Okay. Since Aqua United picked that point in Aba, they've been on the rise. So, it's under game. And the MFM do you need that point in at home and that game i'm looking forward to is sunshine versus enyimba so um not because i support enyimba or which is obvious but it's because um sunshine starts nine games on um on without a win mm -hmm. or, and enyimba quite unfortunate to lose that game to in, orlando pirates, to orlando pirates in in uh, Jobok. so is an opportunity for enyimba and you know for if not for the outstanding games, they might, they might as well be on top of that position. So it's one of those games that they have to pick those maximum points, not, not even a draw. So it's a, it's a game, and they, they just came into the country today. Mm -hmm. So it's a game that they can take that three points from. Another game I'm looking forward to is um, let's see how Cano Pillars um, versus Wiki Torres. Let's see how they will fare against with their new coach in mm -hmm. charge. So um, they are turned on the table and they fired their manager because of the loss in, in um, Okigwe. So let's see how they will fare now and see if they can push up to the top of the table without winning in, in Okitori. Uh, like like Ossie said, this is one of the most competitive leagues in the world. There's no mm -hmm. doubt about it. We have, our, we have our issues, but I think it's every week there's something new happening and yeah. you know something spectacular in the league. So... I, MFM versus Aqua United is one of those games I'm looking forward to. Okay, all right. Um, I like what uh, Iken has said. We, we we have our issues, but uh, the Nigeria Professional Football League is very, very competitive. And 
Imagine if we don't have those issues. Um, I mean, where Nigerian football, especially the domestic scene, will be. Let's take a step down and uh, talk about the Nigeria National League. What I'm going to do is just to reel out the fixtures because we have to create time to talk about the UEFA Champions League and, of course, the Europa League after the draws uh, were done today. Let's start from... Uh, uh, let, let's look at the fixtures. Uh, there you have uh, on the screen, match day, eight fixtures, Group A1. FC Taraba will play against Green Berets, El Kadebi Warriors against Gombe. Uh, back in the day, this used to be a top flight, a game in the top flight. Uh, Naf Rockets uh, will play against uh, Shikoto United. Uh, OAS Sports will be up against Rara FC. EFCC will be up uh, square off against Aklo Sendi. All of these matches will be played in Group A1. Let's move uh, let's flip quickly and uh, go to uh, Division A2, Group A2, KB United will square off against DMD, Yobe Desert Stars, will trade tackles with Road Safety, Safara United will lock horns with Niger Tornadoes, Kogi United uh, will uh, do battle with ABS, and of course Malum Fashi will be up against Shekarao. Shake around babes, okay? Uh, babes, well, all right. So, uh, that's division A2. We've got a division uh, B1. You have Dynamo Force, we take on Oshi United, Delta Force, we take on Shooting Stars, Nilayo FC, we take on Stationary Stores, Lewy United, we take on Go Round. These are match day seven fixtures in division. Uh, B1, in group B1. Van Ressa, we take on Jaya Brillers and the Kitty United. Uh, we're up against Calabar Rovers. Let's go to B2 quickly uh, as we take a look at what's uh, going to happen there. Uh, obviously, some interesting matches to look forward to. Oli Arrows will be up against Bielsa United. Gateway United will be up against Godowski. Uh, Bendel Insurance will be up against World Rocket. I love that name, World Rocket. And uh, Crown FC will be up against Rebel Stars. These are the fixtures in the Nigeria National League. You also have Julius Otete will take on Apex Crane. Joy Comet will take on Ebom Youth. That's in Division B. Two. They, have uh, good, they have good names in those divisions. Good, good interesting, <laughs> names, interesting names. Interesting <laughs> names in, in those places. <laughs> Guys, uh, it's time to travel abroad and take a look at what happened today. We've told you earlier the draws conducted. We'll start with uh, the UEFA Champions League. And uh, I'm going to, I think we should see the fixtures first before we uh, allow us to code Akpan and Alfred Okoligbe tell us uh, the boys have been separated from the men. Now you have the, the the men, you know, apart from two teams here, you have former champions all over. Apart from PSG and uh, Manchester City. The rest have all won. And they're, they're the ones with the money now, yeah, money yeah, bags, yeah, yeah, yeah. you yeah. know. And it, it tells me that these two will join them very soon because they have a lot of investment. Yes, so they yeah. might be joining the other guys. But you have Manchester City will take on Dortmund. FC Porto will take on Chelsea. Bayern will take on... PSG, Real Madrid will take on Liverpool. Uh, let, let me go to Austin first. Uh, Fies, first bite of the apple. I'll go to Austin and ask him. Immediately after this draw, Austin, younger club, the Liverpool manager, says he was very happy uh, to avoid Chelsea and Manchester City. And he says uh, Real Madrid are, are, are a tough team, but he prefers not facing Chelsea and uh, City at this stage. And he says it's not only him, that even Bayern would love not to play Dortmund uh, at this stage. I don't know if you agree with uh, what he said. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree um, to an extent because he was just trying to, you know, hide the weaknesses of his team. And then the other part is just mind games, you know, because he needs to say those sort of things to keep his team into that mode. Liverpool, uh, they're, they're, they're like um, a team that is to the ground, so they can stun anybody at this stage. This is probably what they can only have their eyes fixed on, you know, and they will go uh, with everything that they have. Um, he said that because he knows that his team can be complacent if they get to play Dortmund or they get to play an FC Porto and it might just, you know, you know stun them. So... Uh, Real Madrid will keep them on their toes. They will approach that one with all intents, all purpose, and then see what they can make out of it. Real Madrid on, on their own side, a side that um, can blink also. And when they blink like that, they pay, they pay for it. So 
Jurgen Klopp is doing what he has to do. A very crucial stage of the competition. Don't be rushed. Don't be in a, in a rush to say, oh, Dortmund is out or FC Porto is out. Before you do that, go find out what they did in the round of 16. Before you're quick to say Chelsea will beat FC Porto, be reminded that FC Porto took the Juventus out of the competition. So this is the quarterfinals. This is very crucial. Jurgen Klopp knows it. So um, he's saying those things that he needs to say that can be out okay. there for his players to also listen and then psych them up you know, for, for the big task. I, I love the fixture, Look, but everybody is looking towards Bayern PSG. It's football. Anything can happen here. Yeah, I agree with you. It's football. Alfred, um, quick one. Um, I mean, I'm not asking you to predict. It's still a very uh, long way to go. But, but your thoughts on, on the matchups? I think for Real Madrid, um, Real Madrid versus Real Madrid, if you ask yourself, will Mohamed Salah Go close to Sergio Ramos. <laughs> recall, what happened, recall what happened in the finals. Uh, yeah, ago. a few years ago. Uh, I mean, it will be playing. It will be playing in the um, and they said that um, this guy is top the finals of the Champions League. One wrong move, and I was out of that final. I, I, that somehow will play at the back of his mind. Um, so that's what a repeat of last year's final is what we have in the PSG versus Bayern. After that final, as um, Bayern improved. Yes, has PSG okay. equally improved on that ground. So I think there's a bit of a struggle in that PSG team. And uh, Neymar is not playing. It's not the same thing. So um, perhaps maybe this time around, it will okay. be more comprehensive. Perhaps not as uh, close as it was. Uh, All right. I'm not predicting better. I'm just looking at it. <laughs> for everybody you know, Alfred, support. Alfred, you know what? Let me just pause you. We need to go on the break. When we return, I'll allow you to finish with your train of thoughts before we wrap things up on the show. But let's go on that break. It's the final break. We'll come back and uh, we'll be here to talk about Europa and also to wrap up the show. Uh, welcome back. Um, guys, I have to apologize to you, Alfred, uh, Okolege, and Austin Okon Akman. I thought we would continue with this conversation, uh, but uh, it gets to that point where, you know, we have to wrap things up. So, guys, I want to thank you for your time on the show, and hopefully next time we do this, we have more time uh, to talk about all the things happening in mm -hmm. the world of sports. So, once again, thank you very much, mm -hmm. Austin Okon Akman. Thank you, Yemi. It's good to be on the show. And thank you as well, Alfred Okolege. Thank you, guys. Um, I'm always uh, excited to be here. All right. So that's it. Um, Alfredo Kolegbe and uh, Austin um, saying their bye-byes. Um, it can uh, less in a minute. We're pressed for time. <laughs> Europa League. Yeah. Europa League. Mm. Um, Arsenal still in it. And, Arsenal uh, still in it. Manchester United the, still the, in the, it. The, the interesting team there is Grenada. Because mm -hmm. they remind me of a team called Alaves back in 2000 that played the UEFA Cup in 2000. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. They are doing great things, and they might be that clock in the wheel of Manchester United. But all the same, this the Europa League, you know, they started with so many teams. Mm -hmm. It's now been narrowed down to the quarterfinals. So, interesting features. Ajax, AS, Roma, Arsenal, Davia Prague, uh, Danamo Zagreb, Zagreb, and um, Vidare, which we have uh, two Nigerians, Peter Layinka mm -hmm. at Prague, and um, Vidare. So, interesting features, and we look forward to interesting games coming your way very soon. All right, so that's it. Uh, that's how the cookie crumbles tonight. We've crossed the finish line on the show. But first, I want to thank Iken uh, okay, Chukwendu for being here. Uh, let so, me extract a promise from you. You're going to be here next week? Sure. Definitely. Okay. All right. Definitely. On live, on live TV. <laughs> All right, I want to say thank you to you as well for allowing us to be a part of your day. I want you to enjoy your weekend. We'll be back again next week. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Bye-bye now.